Hello, I'm Philip Evans and I work for RM Education. This is a short video tutorial to help you with the call and video facility conferences that's built into Microsoft Teams. Call and video conferencing is an invaluable tool, whether you're working remotely and collaboratively for remote meetings with staff, governors, or even parents. It can be also used to create how-to videos, as I'm doing here, and if you're really brave, virtual lessons in real time. Hopefully you will have seen my earlier video that explains the basics of Teams, how it can help improve communication through the message board, help with collaboration where you can work with documents at the same time, and also it's convenient because it works on any browser. I didn't spend much time on the conferencing aspect, but this video is a really useful tool to help you with that. Many of you will have used Skype at home and maybe its predecessor Link and probably found it a bit challenging to work in a school environment. Teams is a much more improved product and simply works. As I mentioned, it works on any browser, but I do recommend downloading the full version of the app from the Microsoft Teams website or mobile store. And before I start, I do recommend if you're using core conference facilities that you have a USB headphone and mic. You can use the mic and speakers on a laptop, but you may find it picks up more background noise. And although you can mute yourself, it is better to have a microphone that's near, near to your face but not too close that you, they can hear you breathing and, uh, and maybe coughing. But do plug that microphone in before you join a conference call, uh, because if you don't, it will use the default laptop speakers and mic. Or if you do forget, you can change that option in the three dots menu, which I will show later. OK, so one of the first things you can do is share your screen, which is very, very great if you're collaborating and pre presenting documents. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do now. If you do have multiple screens, I do recommend um, setting your screen to duplicate, which is Windows and P to duplicate. Otherwise, it can be a bit more confusing as to which screen you do share out. Um, but if you are only sharing, uh, say, a PowerPoint document, you can select just that document and that avoids any other pop ups um, or uh, interference on the screen uh, during your presentation. OK, so I've just shared out my primary screen. I also recommend bottom right hand corner if you're using Windows 10 to turn quiet hours on. That again should pop, uh, reduce any pop ups, uh, reminders, and emails and that sort of thing popping up whilst you're presenting. This is especially useful if you're doing a how to video like I'm doing. OK, you can see that my screen is shared out because I've got a red border around my screen. I mentioned before if you need to mute yourself, this is the mic button here, and you can mute yourself using that. I'm going to launch my screen in a bit fuller just to show you. So the share screen option is through this button here and you select that and then you select either the application you want to share out or the screen. Other people in the meeting can uh, also share their screens and take over the meeting as, as you uh, as you wish. And also if they double click on your session, they can then ask to take over your screen if they want to help you with a with a particular problem on your, your device. You've also got a, a conversational view chat uh, option on the right hand side there. That's quite useful if some of your uh, attendees can't maybe hear you and ask you and or they or you can't hear them. They can potentially talk to you through, uh, through a, a, a chat message there. Uh, this one shows you who's uh, on the meeting, who's been invited to it, but also who's actually joined. So you don't really need to do a roll call to see who's on on the call. You can actually see very quickly who has joined the meeting through that people button. And obviously that one there will hang you up. And if you do that by mistake, you can just rejoin the meeting at the top. OK, so um, so the first thing to do uh, is uh, to, to create a meeting. So I'm going to show you two different ways. There's the uh, Teams way and there's the Outlook way. Um, both are perfectly valid. I personally use the Outlook way because I find it easier. But I will show you the Teams way first. So if you go to the calendar option on your screen, and on to um, uh, the date that you want your meeting to be. Uh, and you would expect, you just highlight the area or you can click on new meeting. Going to put, um, 
bit of address here. So um, you can you can do that and separate them with semicolons, and that will send uh, an email to uh, somebody outside your tenancy. And bear in mind, they could then forward that to somebody else, but Teams will protect you from getting unwanted external guests um, because anybody external won't join your conference call until you let them in. So if I quickly go back to uh, my session here, you, you can have the option in the people button to um, release them from the waiting area. They basically sit in a waiting area until you release them into the meeting. So select that press send and save and that sends them an email uh, and anybody in your tenancy that you want to attend the meeting. Through Outlook, very similar, we select a calendar, we go to new Teams meeting. Now I've got that option there because I've downloaded the full version of Teams onto my desktop. If you haven't got that button, that'll be the reason why. But you can also go new appointment and it may be that you've originally got it as a, um, a normal meeting in a room and then you decide later on you want to make it a Teams meeting and you can do that simply by pressing that Teams meeting button. What that's done in Outlook is created a hyperlink, so that's a unique URL just for that conference call. So obviously we're going to give it a name and again we can put the external people and who it needs to go to. They'll get that link and that means they don't need to have the Teams app, so that's a good thing. So anybody can join. So again, if they've got a browser and an internet connection, they can join. If they've got a camera on their, their device, they can enable that if they want to, if you want to do uh, proper video conferencing. So again, it's useful, whereas the old Skype days, you needed to have Skype installed, you needed to have Link installed to, to actually uh, get the conference to work. Whereas with Teams, literally, if you've got a browser and you accept the permissions to um, allow the browser to uh, listen to your microphone, then away you go. And that is very simply how you create a meeting as you would do normally but making it a teams virtual conference meeting um, you can also uh, select meet now so that's quite handy if you've got an emergency and you need to, to make a call to a number of people very quickly um, with that option you do need to have the teams app open um, but you select um, discard this particular one you select the meet now option you select that, you select the participants, and it will automatically dial out to those people so that they can have a, a very quick on the fly conference call. So much easier than the old days where you would maybe create a, a room and then invite them afterwards. You just press meet now, select the names, and it will start ringing them out. Obviously, if they are on a conference call already, it won't ring on their phone until, until they've finished that conference call. So, so yes, that's very much in a nutshell how to use it. So I'm going to, to show you a few more options within the, uh, the, the Teams conference window. So we've got the mute, we've got three dots here. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you've accidentally um, plugged the headphones and mic in afterwards, you can select that from there. And that's quite useful if somebody's saying they can't hear you. You can see here that clearly the mic is, is working because we've got the, uh, the sound going up on there. Uh, and also, if you can't hear them, you can check that you haven't accidentally muted the, uh, your speak or your headphones. OK, um, you've got the full screen mode. That's quite handy if they're maybe displaying a document and it's trying to squeeze it into your, uh, your window within Teams so you can enter full screen and that will do that. You've also got show meeting notes, so you may have one person on the conference call that's dedicated to, to do the minutes for the meeting. So that will sh create a... Um, a quasi notebook which you can then um, use it to create formal meeting minutes uh, afterwards. Um, recommend if you are doing the note taking that you possibly mute your phone, um, your mic so that you, you don't get the tapping of keyboard disrupting everybody else. And uh, obviously we've got the recording option which is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so this is how I'm doing the how-to video. I, I created the meet now I didn't invite anybody else I'm the only one on the call and I simply selected start recording I'm now talking through the microphone sharing my screen which is now recording it to a stream video that will be accessible about 15-20 minutes after the meeting uh, you can then download that you can then share it within your tenancy so that's a, a very useful way to create a how-to video without necessarily having all the kit and caboodle with a, a camera and, and video uh, sharing uh, options on your screen and um, also uh, coming uh, up is um, going to be a hands up option so there'll be 
if you've got 20 people on a conference call and they all want to ask a question, there'll be a hands up option that's coming very soon from Microsoft, which as a presenter, you'll see a yellow hand next to their, their face or their uh, video feed. And so you know that they're waiting to ask a question. So rather than the chaotic, uh, everybody all trying to talk at once. Um, you can mute other people in the conversation. So if you're finding one person's got a uh, lawnmower in the background and, and, and they're disrupting the meeting, you can mute it for them if they're, they're not realizing they're, they're causing noise for everybody else, um, which is very useful. Um, and also the video side of things. So um, the, we do recommend if you think about the body language being a quite a big percentage of the communication um, results. So your words uh, are only like five, ten percent, and and your tone is probably another twenty percent. But the rest of communication is made up of body language. And if you haven't got a camera, then you obviously can't can't portray that. But if you do, and you wish to turn that on, um, we're certainly recommending that for internal meetings um, just to improve that uh, that communication. If you're a bit camera, camera shy or your background isn't uh, as professional as you'd like, you've got to start video with a blur. So I'll, I'll demonstrate that now and blur my background. So now it's just me and no distracting background behind me. Uh, again, Microsoft are looking to improve that. There is coming up a uh, predefined pictures for your background. So it might be a, a meeting room or it might be an office background or a conference background. Um, and I've also seen that you can then also upload your own images so it could be a desert island if you if you if you really want to so that can be a bit of fun for that um but yeah the blog below my background uh, very very useful if you want to, to be less distracting and if you want to decide to turn your camera back off again uh, you simply press that button again um so that is pretty much it really on the conference calls as i say you've got the mute the sharing screen options uh you've got the um enter full screen if you're finding the image isn't uh, as big as you'd like it to be, you can also zoom in once you've done that. This little window can be a bit annoying. Obviously, it's popping up. You can just minimize that. You don't need that on your screen. And in terms of the faces on your screen, I believe it keeps four uh, on the screen. And whoever talks next, it puts their face or their, their video feed, if they're video conferencing, into one of those four windows. And, and that's about it. So I hope hope that's been useful. I hope you can find some uses for that. Certainly uh, for remote working, especially during this corona outbreak, if you're trying to, to communicate with all of your staff, it's a great way of doing so. Uh, you could do it for, for parents. So, you know, sometimes the tone on a phone call conversation might not be there, but potentially if they've got a video, you can actually see them and they can see you. That That, that can break down a few barriers. And certainly for how-to videos, I think it's really powerful. Uh, so as you can see, I've created this through Teams. So um, that shows you how simple it can be. So I'm going to uh, stop my recording and hopefully you found that useful. And please check out the other videos we've got on our website.